Hi, welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. My name is Dimitri Lylan. I'm the host, and I'm back once again with my guest, Suze Hinton. Hi, Suze, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Suze is a cloud developer advocate focused on IoT, and we've been working on a series of episodes. So if you've been watching Toolbox before, you've probably seen a couple of other shows potentially, or at least have seen them you know, get published up. Uh, we're really trying to cover uh, how to get star started with the Windows IoT platform, mm -hmm. how to extend it with the Azure IoT platform, how to work with the hardware, the debugging. We're really trying to be basic, right? Like we want to start right. from the very beginning and build up. So if you watch the other episode, you've gone from like, I don't know what this hardware is all the way through. Like I can write an app that uses sensors and uses different kind of approaches to working with different kinds of sensors, all of that. But then there was this one other piece we wanted to cover today, which was the Azure IoT part of it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we have on our screen behind us and how it all comes together, and then we can jump in the code. Awesome. Yeah, it wouldn't really be Internet of Things if like this device was just running locally right. and didn't have any kind of connection to the outside, right? Well, we cheated a little in the last episode, right? Because we did true. facial recognition yes. using the Azure Face API. So the device already kind of required okay. a connection. But now we we are like okay, but the device kind of exists by itself somewhere, right? In the real world, this would be embedded somewhere or standing in some totally. some device, right? Yeah. So what if you actually wanted to monitor those sensor values from the outside, and mm -hmm. let's say you wanted to actually kind of persist it somewhere else, like in the cloud, such as in Azure? This yeah. is where we have some really cool tools, and you know our biggest one in Azure that we're known for with IoT is Azure IoT Hub. Which is like a um, it's like an IoT me like messaging broker platform that we have, and it has multiple uh, protocols that it speaks, and it basically allows you to have your device talking to the cloud, and you can be sort of you know reading those messages from the hub, mm -hmm. or you can tell the hub to then communicate back to the device as well, which we're going to cover in later episodes too. Cool. So um, so with IoT Hub, that's something that like you go into the Azure portal, you you create I guess a subscription, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can. You know, create a project or something, how, do you, how does that work? How do you get to the point you, you can start receiving and sending data via the hub? Yeah, so just like the, the, the high level overview is you create like a, uh, an actual instance of an Azure IoT hub. Mm -hmm. You register like a device in, in that hub, and mm -hmm. that gives you credentials that your device can use to speak with the hub. Right. We can actually totally shortcut, and we can use other Azure offerings, such as the one that we have behind us, and that's called Azure IoT Central. And that is using Azure IoT Hub in the background, but this is more of a, a software as a service right. offering instead, which is really cool. And what you're looking at right now is you, you might recognize that little picture is over our Pi. Mm -hmm. This is actually listening to live telemetry coming from the Pi right now. Awesome. Yeah, that's the actual device that we have sitting here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that you kind of explain it to me, because I'm, I'm new to some of this as well, is that, <laughs> yeah, this, this is all new to me. Like the uh, IoT Hub is the, the API, right? That's our yes. bridge. That's where we're sending data over. That All this data that's being visualized in the SaaS is coming in from IoT Hub. And then this SaaS is configured to read from that IoT Hub data store of some sort. And it's visualizing data, and but you pre-configured it. Like not, nothing on this view was there in the beginning, right? That's you had right. to position all these like dashboard widgets, and mm -hmm. you configured it. But now it is displaying live data, which is really cool. Yeah, and I can just sort of drag and drop stuff, and you know, so decide cool, yeah. to put it elsewhere. And this is a relatively new offering from us, and I think it's actually really cool because yeah. building your own dashboard sucks, you yeah. know, and like. Most, most dashboards out there are made for like logging and monitoring of web services, not really like devices. So mm -hmm. that's what I really like. And we already have ready-made templates for things like Raspberry Pis and stuff, cool. um, which is awesome. So yeah. I was really, really pleasantly surprised by this. So this is us sending right now that, uh, that UWP app, which you might have seen spoilers in other episodes. We have like an Azure IoT Hub uh, static class that's sending some of that telemetry. So yeah. we can take a look at that now if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, let's take a look. Great. So for in Visual Studio, I'm going to stop that instance now. And I have a, a IoT Hub, um, just a static class with a couple of methods in it. And so I am using the Azure Devices client that comes, um, and you can install you can install this from uh, NuGet. So mm -hmm. that's where I sort of got that from. Right. So that is a package that you can install and use. And so I do initially, initially when the app starts up, I start connecting to the Azure IoT Hub. And these are credentials here. You can see central connection string. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's also like a device ID there. They're given to you when you create your uh, IoT Central application. So when mm -hmm. you create that Raspberry Pi device, it automatically registers, this, registers that with your IoT Hub and then gives you those credentials to give to your Raspberry Pi. Right. So it really couldn't be easier. Mm -hmm. When you're creating a new client, you have those those particular credentials. Cool. 
So uh, the next thing we're doing is we have like a send device to cloud message, and that's what we're actually using to report that temperature value. Mm -hmm. Given that in our app right now, it's only reading temperature from that particular sensor, that's the only information we're sending. But you can see here that we're, we're actually just creating like um, some data to be able to send. We're sending what time we sent that, um, th we took that temperature reading, uh, the actual temperature value itself, which we, um, which we looked at in previous episodes, mm -hmm. which you should check out if you'd like to see how we got that. And then we can also send along our device ID just to make it a little bit easier to kind of grok those messages that are coming in. And, and you can send like, J this is JSON, yeah, right? It's I mean, just we're using JSON. a JSON library. So totally. you could have sent any kind of data you wanted. You just chose this. We're not limited to sending temperature data, right? Yeah, there's, right. There's all sorts of data you can send. And in a previous episode, this was the same app we started showing mm -hmm. that already had this, this stuff in there um, and we, we have the sensor on the board like this is all very totally. real so look, look at the previous episode if you haven't seen it before totally so we can start putting our own stuff in there which I won't now cool. um, we just have to serialize that into like a string mm -hmm. and then uh, our device client send event async with our message that's what's doing the IoT hub stuff it's just that one line awesome. so once you've actually sort of put your message together you know we just pass the temperature reading in every single time so we read the mm -hmm. temperature and then we immediately invoke this me this method here in our main um, in our main page class in order to do that. And so you can see here when we initialize our devices, I'm actually connecting to the IoT Hub. Um, and so that means I'm ready to send the telemetry once we actually have our sensors initialized as well. So I'll just try and really quickly find where I'm doing that. And you might have seen a sneak peek of that in yeah. previous episodes. But you can see here that I'm reading the, the temperature, I convert it to Fahrenheit, and I'm sending explicitly the Fahrenheit uh, mm -hmm. conversion. And this is just my static class we showed with that. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're constantly, and every tick of this, of this timer, you're sending yep. up the data that you've decided to send up, and then IoT Hub just stores that as you know, the JSON that it receives, and then so the central part of it, the Windows IoT Central, is the visualizer, right? This is the right. SAS, so you decided to visualize some of that data. So potentially, you can be really creative on the kind of data you can send back, visualize, Absolutely. and I guess scale to many devices, sending back telemetry without having to build a lot of you know, back answer. I mean, just think about how much stuff you'd have to build. I know. But, but like philosophically, like let's talk about like Windows IoT Hub. Mm -hmm. So 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 let, let's be very concrete. Like, what problem is this solving, right? Um, is this something the industry already had as an issue? Is this something Microsoft thinks is a problem? Like, give us some of that context. Yeah, that's a really great question. So messaging brokers for devices have been around for a long time, and we do have you know several different protocols such as MQTT. But the problem that it's solving is that, you know, we never used to really distribute devices at scale in this way. Mm. Like imagine, right. imagine, you know, there's some kind of smart toothbrush that knows, you know, how long you brush your teeth for. And then it also is like logging how often you brush your teeth, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine you know you sold like a million of them around the world, and like they're all somehow communicating back to your central application to do things like firmware updates for your toothbrush, yeah. um, and even just like being able to plot like you know in someone's account on the on you know your company's website like how they're doing with brushing their teeth. Right. So you, you can basically, as a company, you can collect data the user decides to send you. You can then do something meaningful with that data, totally. either completely in a custom way. So in other words, you can read that uh, Azure IoT Hub data store yourself with code you've written or other solutions and we just happen to have a solution that does some basic visualization so it's great for deploying some devices doing some testing doing some pre-can things or you can write some crazy code to to plot how your toothbrush it yeah. is going. I mean, that's a contrived example, but it is kind of easy to imagine. Yeah. Um, and yeah, IoT Hub focuses on mostly trying to do this at scale. You know, it's able to collect a ton of messages and kind of like buffer them until you're ready to take them because it will mm -hmm. keep those messages around for a while. But it also allows you to have that two-way communication as well. And so mm -hmm. if you have like a certain uh, batch of toothbrushes you want to update, um, you can just isolate that group and you can just send out firmware updates to just those devices themselves. And so it's a two-way communication and yeah. it just has so many features in it that I'm not even like touching on. But the biggest thing that we focus on too, which can be a problem with uh, devices, is security. Mm. So we've heard all about, you know, the DDoSing webcams and yes. and, and stuff that happened, you know, uh, like last year and, and the year before. That's something that we at Microsoft take really seriously. And so we also have some really minimal security bars that you have to reach to even use 
IoT Hub in the first place. Mm -hmm. And we give you a lot of great documentation and features to make sure that your devices are as secure as possible. That's awesome. So, um, you know, I, I, first of all, I can't wait till I pick up my toothbrush at home and it says <laughs> updating. And I'm standing there going, really? <laughs> this, this happens with people with light bulbs already. So Scott Hanselman totally, so he, he yeah. said. Um, but but that, I think it's awesome to have that flexibility as a developer yes. to build out the platform. So so that's what IoT Hub solves in all of this, right? And that's just a C Sharp SDK and, and you're up and running. And it's built totally. for this. Yep. Um, and IoT Hub works with, with other you know, it's not just for Windows IoT, right? right? We're yeah. building it more broadly, so it's a it's a great platform. And then Central. So, what what is this? What is IoT Central? What problem is it concretely solving for customers? Yeah, so it's solving a problem of having to build all of that infrastructure yourself. And the so visualization of the it. visualizations, yeah. but like. Uh, Central also has a bunch of built-in features such as uh, you can have alerts, you can have behaviors that happen as a result of data that's coming in. And like your device is overheating, you know, yeah, email exactly. alert or something coming out. Yeah, and so that can actually dispatch yeah. like a command back to the device to update a property saying like, oh, maybe like, maybe turn up the refrigeration or whatever if, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a refrigeration yeah. device overheating. Um, and it can also let you know that something is wrong so that maybe you want to schedule some maintenance for that device or something. Mm -hmm. So it's not just kind of showing stuff on a dashboard, it's also allowing you to kind of have a little bit of extra intelligence built into that as well, but without having to do that all from scratch, which is a pretty big ask. Awesome. So this really makes, I think, our, our sample app even just a little bit more real, right? That's our goal. It went totally. from just kind of working. Now we, we are sending telemetry to the cloud. We are visualizing the telemetry. We're, mm -hmm. we're giving you as a developer much more options. And by all means, if there's more interesting things that people want to see, you know, leave us uh, comments in the show notes, mm -hmm. uh, send tweets. You, you know, Susan and I are very active on Twitter, so let us know what you're thinking. And we'd love to do more content around this, but I think this is a great kind of starting point. And uh, anything else that you wanted to show as part of this? Uh, no, I think the, the next episode, we're going to do some super cool stuff where we're going to start like controlling the device rather than just having the device mm -hmm. send telemetry to us. So awesome. I'm excited to talk to you about that next time. OK, well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank and you. folks, thank you for watching this new episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. We really appreciate that you watch this. Check out the rest of the episodes in the series. We're again doing a series in IoT, so there's more episodes behind us and a couple of more in front of us, which we'll be back to record soon. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Visual Studio Toolbox. Take care out there. Thank you.